Okay, so uh, finally I get on the mats. Feels nice. I haven't <laughs> felt the mats in a while. Um, if you've done my class at the camps before, you've definitely seen this material. Uh, it's a class that I really like to teach, and um, I think it's like it's like my go-to class for people I don't know, and also when I'm teaching a group of of, of uh, different skill levels from complete beginners to experienced guys. This is always what I start with, and and. Um, the material of this class, I'm going to try to boil it down to one hour, but usually I'll, I'll we'll probably go through th three like main themes, that we, three like things we're going to talk about, which usually I would do that in three classes, three one hour classes, or even when I'm teaching at home in, in my own academy, this is something that I'll spend like a few months on, on each of these things. Right? So you, you're going to get a super condensed version and um, hopefully you can, you can, uh, It'll plant a few seeds in your mind with uh, some ideas of, of things to, to keep in mind when you're rolling and training. At least um, for me, it's I, I like I like to do so to be really simple and really complicated at the same time. I, I really like the complexity and the and the, the chaos of the situations and the, the rolls and the, like the physical stress and, and try to find the system and, and uh, kind of the art in, in that. Uh, but I also like when I'm rolling to, to not think about too many things because. Especially the better the better your opponent is, the more stuff they're going to do that you have you have no idea what they're they're doing. Uh, and if I try to learn every single attack they do and learn every single defense for, for, for one of for every move, it would be impossible for me. And my brain would probably burn out from thinking too much. So um, so I try to my, for myself is to learn jujitsu is, is very much about trying to understand the, the fundamental mechanics of how things work and keep as little stuff in my in my my head as possible when I roll, instead of thinking about preparing 100 counters to 100 potential moves, I try to understand what's, what are the mechanics that makes every move work, and if I, if I understand that, it's much easier for me to counter and attack, right? Um, so this is my approach, and and, uh, and usually if you, you will not do it this week, but usually if you watch me roll, maybe you, if you're a uh, kind of beginner, you, you look at it and you think it, it looks like super complicated, advanced, a lot of details and stuff, but in reality, if, if, you, if you've done this one class, if you, if you look at me roll after this, or actually look at anyone roll after that, hopefully you can see that it's actually very few things that goes on. In my mind, when I'm rolling, it's, it's kind of empty. I don't think about a lot of things. It's like tumbleweed, and there's only like three things I worry about always when I'm rolling. And, and of course, you keep worrying about those things for 20 years and, and roll X no, uh, number of times a week, and then you get pretty good at, at reacting from these principles. But I think these are important things that, that are uh, easy to understand and implement on day one and, and 20 years later. So these, these are, this is the stuff I'll teach in a beginner's class and this is the same thing I will talk about with my guys who I trained with for more than 10 years. Uh, this is the foundation of, of every technique we kind of work on and, and, uh, and try to explain for, uh, and understand for ourselves and for each other. Um, so in my, in my own academy at home in, in St. Bart's, this is pretty much uh, it's pretty much all I'm teaching. They, I, I, I tell them as a joke, I'm, I, I'm going to teach you one thing, like a real, like a real sensei. But it's actually true. I only teach them pretty much like one or two things, and the rest are just like variations and details and other ways of understanding it and reminding them that this is real and this is what you need to do. So, so for me, this is the, I, I'll try to condense all of my jujitsu into 50 minutes, which is uh, 20 years into 50 minutes. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to need the perfect. Uh, who would I use to use? Oh, everyone I use have done this class a million times before, so they're not here. But uh, can I use your tool? Good size. Okay, so uh, on your back, side control. So we're just going to talk about three things, and I'm going to go through it really quick. And these are the three things that this is the only stuff that goes through my, my head when I'm rolling, like fundamentally. And then, of course, there's a million variations and, and details on top of that. But this is pretty much all I think about. So the first thing we need to know is uh, is uh, Jiu-Jitsu super string theory, as we some uh, someone named it at some point, a little bit bold, a little bit a uh, little, <laughs> little bit brave to 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 say you, you you came up with a super string theory that explains everything in Jiu-Jitsu. But so far, I think it's going pretty well. Um, so all of Jiu-Jitsu, positional-wise, is one thing, as far as I see. Um, it's really just one thing that we always fight for. If you're, if you're attacking, you're attacking this one thing. If you're defending, you're defending this one, one thing. It goes for every single thing in terms of position. Passing, holding, scrambling, escaping, 
everything you can imagine that, that goes into the whole game of positioning. And it's, it's one thing, it's we're fighting for the space between knees and chest. That's it. So if you look at the, this space, like this, one person is the, the attacker and one person is the defender. Always, unless we're in a scramble, we're 50-50, right? So the attacker has one purpose when we're rolling. One purpose, one purpose only, get into that space and stay there. That's it. The defender has one purpose and one purpose only, get the other guy out of that space, defend that space, right? That's it, that's the super th string theory. So that can explain, as far as I see it, everything we do in terms of position, right? So consider this, every single top position you can possibly come up with is just me being in this space, right? Side control, I put my upper body in the space. Knee on belly, I put my, my leg shin, right? North south, I kind of put my, my head upper body in the space. Mount is just me putting my, my hip in the space and even having the back just sit up. It's me controlling the space with my feet and my arms a little, right? So you might say, yeah, but how much are you really controlling this space? It's only your feet, right? But we all know if he takes one foot out, I now lost the full control, right? And if he takes both feet out, I have nothing, right? So it really is just me controlling this space or not. That's what defines a top position, right? Um, even in turtle, if he's here, if I have no control with this space, we know that I pretty much have no control of this position. He can roll or stand up or whatever he wants, he's gonna get up, right? But even a little bit of control, even a, a grip, like a, a kind of an underhook or grabbing the key, and now gives me a little bit more. One hook gives me a little bit more and this gives me full control of the position. The only difference is me being in there or not. Now I have, okay, go to turtle. Now I have nothing, we know that, right? But it's only because I'm not in that space. If I change one little thing, now I have full control, right? So, we're gonna go through this really quick. I can usually spend a few hours on this easily, but we'll go through it super quick. So grab a partner, pick any top position you like to do, that, that you kind of normally like to do, any dominant top position, and you just have a short conversation, five, 10 seconds, Say, why is this a top position? Because I control that space with this and this part of my body. Christian is right, move on, okay? <laughs> so, and we're not clapping or anything, please. Grab anyone, you can whistle if you want. Grab anyone, go through a few top positions, and that's it, one, two, three, whistle. But it's not really rocket science. Does it make sense so far? Yeah, okay, good. So any top position is just you being in that space. There's nothing more to it. If you can be in that space and you can stay there, by definition, you are in a top position, right? So what is an escape? Explained by the super string theory. I pick any position and he picks any escape. Now do it very slowly and we'll try to explain it. Right now I'm in the position, I'm in, in his space. He's escaping, what is he doing? He's, he's moving the space away and closing it with his knees, right? So why did he escape? He escaped because I'm not in that space anymore. Do another escape, what's your knees? See what he's doing? He's moving the space away from me, right? So by definition, I lost my top position. Do some more escape. Look at what he's doing. You see that, right? So every escape is just you having the guy in the space and then somehow either getting him out or her or moving the space away, right? Standing up is also an escape because you take that space and stand up with it, right? So do the same thing, you got two minutes, you grab someone and uh, you just go through, pick any position you like, any escape you like, you have a short conversation, you realize that I'm, I'm right, uh, that every escape you can possibly come up with is pretty much just you getting your opponent out of that space, right? If you flip the position, let's say it's side controls, because this, this has to count too. Let's say I'm here, or mount is probably better. If he rolls me off, if he flips, right, he escaped by it just it's switching roles. Now he's the attacker and I'm the defender. Right? So go through any escape that you'd like to do from any position and just realize that what you're doing is just kind of clearing that space in one way or the other, right? Let's go. All right, so that's all escapes. Everything you need to know about escapes. Just free that space. Now, what is the guard? What is the guard? Because I'm on top, but he's kind of the one who can attack primarily, right? So why is that? 
I'm on top, but the reason why he can attack is because he still got control of his own space. I don't, I don't have any control of it. This is why he can, he can attack, right? So what is a guard pass? A guard pass is staying on top, but just moving into that space. So any guard pass you can possibly come up with is just you going from not being in the space to being in that space, right? That is the very fundamental definition of a guard pass. So whenever you're passing the guard, you know what you're really doing is pretty much just coming up with some kind of way to open up that space and put yourself into it, right? And it can be really any pass. See what I'm doing? Opening up the space, moving my shoulder into it. Right, now my upper body. Let's see. Come up with something. What am I doing? What's the guard pass? I find a way to open up the space between his knees and chest and put myself into it. So any guard pass you can possibly come up with, it's really just you. Look at this, look at what I'm doing. Into the space. Right? To pass. That's why sometimes you can do silly passes like that. And as long as you can just get into that space, right? It's by definition a pass. So spend two minutes, go through any guard passes that you like, you prefer to do, have a little conversation and realize all you're doing and all you have to do to pass the guard is make him open up that space a little bit and, and win it, get in there with something, right? All right, let's try. Does that make sense so far? Did anyone come up with a guard pass that was not getting into that space? <laughs> yes. Um, what about you, uh, you have to show me, I have no idea what you're talking oh, yeah. about. <laughs> just yet. Well, well, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. If you don't want to show me, but <laughs> but I would say there's there's a, a kind of a a gray line between position positions and then like submissional positions, which I'm called. Because even like a basic foot lock like this, right? It'll pretty much only work because I have a little bit of control yeah. in between his knees and chest. If he clears this foot, I have nothing. So that counts? Right? Yeah, of course. Because, because this, by de this defines the control, this foot, right? Or even here. If I did not have this, I have nothing, right? So you see, sometimes it's just very little, but you always need the control in that space between the knees and chest. So if he could clear this, if he could like chop off my, my leg somehow, look at that, he's out. Why? Only because he cleared this space, right? So sometimes it's a very obvious thing. Sometimes it's like mouth. I pretty much put my entire body in the space, right? But sometimes it's just a foot, right? I mean, just like we just did. Sometimes it's just this. This makes the whole difference, right? If he clears this foot, he's out, right? That's it. So. And I mean, you can, you can go deeper and deeper into that hole and try to explain more and more tiny details of a split second of control. But looking at the big picture, I think, at least for me, it explains most things. And I, I, I'm also not very advanced with footlocks. Like if you want to beat me, you just become good at footlocks and then I'll, I'll tap. I had all the knee injuries in the, on Wikipedia, so I'll just like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm too old for that. You're, you're, like, you're like 12 years too late rolling with me for like going like toe hold for toe hold and not, not tapping. Um, I made that mistake too many times. Okay, so let's move on. So what is the guard? What is guard bottom? Why is it that I'm on bottom, but I can still attack? It's only because I still own this space, right? So how do I defend the guard? I just, I just not let him, I just not let him get in here. That's the simple, simple answer of how to defend the guard, guard pass, right? So when you see me defend the guard, and usually this is the point where I would do some kind of cool demo, ask like five guys to try and pass oh. my guard and they can. <laughs> and then you see, oh, all he's doing is closing the space, but I cannot because my leg is pretty fucked, right? But really all I have to do, all I have to worry about fundamentally, and then you add one million details and, and ex years of experience. Fundamentally, I have to come up with a way to keep this space closed, right? So to defend the guard, I'm gonna always kind of default here when I'm in danger, right? I'm never gonna open up unless I have to, right? The only time I would ever open up would be if I have like 
full control. If I lose this control, in my head, it's just break it. In my head, uh, go slow, I need to talk. <laughs> now I can open, it's fine, I have the control. If I lose it, it's like eh, 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 close this again. Because I know this is what he needs. This is all he needs to pass, is this space, right? That's why I'll never be here and kind of reach. Right? That's why this guard doesn't work very well. The L guard, it never caught on. <laughs> it never became popular. Right? Or this. You're laughing, but I mean, this is, this is technically a guard. It's just a really, really bad one. That's why this is a great guard. Right? And that's why when I sit up, I sit here. I don't sit here. So I want, if I want to catch him, I'm not going to try to reach. I'm going to keep this face close and now start to play. Right? First priority, everything I worry about is this first and then grips, and then where I put my feet, and then attacks, right? But if I, if I don't know, if I don't build a, a foundation of defense, which is the basic fundamentals of defending this space, then all I have is a, is a fortress built of cannons. And you just fucking shoot with all your sweeps and submissions, and you hope you, you kill them before they, they run too close and, and like take over your fortress, right? So you build the walls first, which is defending the space combining it with grips and foot positioning, and then you start to, to go for the attacks and sweeps and submissions, right? And this is a, a, a full class or a full month or a full year. I'll teach the, the details of defending the car, but this, that's the foundation. You defend this space. So what I'd like you to do now is go very light. Just imagine you're me demoing this, right? Go very light. One person passes, but you're not actually passing. You go like 10, 20%. Pass a little bit, move around. Push and pull a little bit in the legs, you know. And bottom person, you just defend the guard like usual, but you keep one thing in mind, that all you actually have to do, no matter how, what tool you're using, is to defend that space, right? And the tools you have are hooks, grips, shrimp, spin around, invert, move your hip. That's, those are all the tools to, to, to get the same kind of uh, purpose, which is to defend that space, right? So I just wanted to go very, very light. If, if someone actually passes the guard, Everybody's doing 100 push-ups, right? Because that's not the purpose. You, you don't, don't try to win. Don't be a dick. So go very light, defend the guard, just move around and look at yourself. What are, what are you actually doing? You defend this space somehow, right? Sometimes you close it, sometimes you move it away. Sometimes you do something flashy, sometimes you just pass. But to defend the guard part, you just need to defend the space, right? Grab someone, you get like four minutes, just go super light and just uh, uh, all agree that I'm right. One, two, three, whisk. All right, anyone where that just does not make sense so far, please don't be shy. Can you all see that to defend the guard, you pretty much just come up with various ways of defending that space. Right? If you leave it open for a split second, the, uh, the, the opponent will move into it, and that is by definition a guard pass. Because they're in the space and you can't get them out. Right? So, so with this, we could, we could keep going. I could do like five, six, seven more situations where we just kind of look at some techniques and like, oh, that's right. All I'm doing is either getting in there or, or trying to get the other person out. Right? Like the same for, for turtle, for scrambling, for takedowns, for pretty much everything in terms of positions. Um, one question that usually comes up is like, what about the close guard? Because right now I'm defending the space, right? But now I'm actually giving him the space. Why is this? Because even though I'm on bottom, I'm the only one who can attack. So I'm actually in his space. Right, the close guard is just the mount where gravity is turned, turned the wrong way. The exact, the exact same position. Right? <laughs> That's why right now I'm attacking his space. So what does he need to do in the close guard? He needs to get me out of the space to do anything. Right? That is opening the close guard. So as, as far as for me, in my head, this explains everything for me when I'm rolling. I, I can kind of look at any technique. I, I usually don't know what they're doing because I... I roll with someone who's at a really high level, no matter how much jiu-jitsu you did, you're always going to run into stuff you've never seen before. Pretty much all the time, right? That happens all the time. Especially when you're getting like a little older and, and do jiu-jitsu more as, uh, as like a hobby. Like for me, it's, it's just fitness pretty much. I roll like twice a week with beginners and just do like wrestling one day a week now. And just for because I enjoy it, it's, it's a fun activity and it keeps me healthy. So I'm not like, I'm, I'm not like 10 years ago where I was like studying jiu-jitsu and always trying to be in the, the cutting edge of technology and, and like seeking out who, okay, who, who did what techniques at, at, to win the Worlds this year. Um, 
So I'm in a different phase now. So now I, I, I roll with people who do all kinds of stuff I've never seen before. I kind of know, oh, that's right. I think that's, that's, a, that's a trend at the moment, but I'm like, I'm lost. I have no idea what they're doing. Uh, but no matter what they're doing, I can always kind of look at it and say, oh, it, this, it's just a new way of controlling the space or getting out of the space, really. So I, whenever I try to defend anything, be it a, a guard pass, a position, uh, like a leg lock, something, something, I always just look at how, how do they, how do they, how, how are they in my space and how can I get them out? And usually the, the, the solution, I don't need anyone to kind of tell me a technique to do it. I could just look at, oh, there's a foot here. I figure out a way to get it out, right? Or I want to pass a guard. Someone has a really good guard. All I'm thinking about is what are the openings? How can I get in there? Like I'm not, because the same as, as you roll with people who are, who are like more and more advanced, they do all kinds of tricky shit in the garden. And, See, look at this. I don't even know what this is. Like, I, I'm too old for this shit. Right? What the fuck is it? You know? It's some kind of variation of something I know. Right? But I, I look at this and I'm like, how do I pass this shit? So I'm not, I, I, I don't have time to go out and read a book about this position or sit down and do like a workshop with someone or attend a seminar to figure it out. But I can kind of see, uh, how do I get in here? How do I, how do I open it? And, and, and then obviously you add experience many years of rolling and and that might you know come up with some way of of attacking this space i'm not sure if it's going to work or not but at least i know this is a valid attempt because i i somehow get in here if it doesn't work there's like okay there was one attempt at getting into the space that didn't work i'll try some something else but fundamentally i know that for me to to do anything I, i'm gonna have to get into this space in one way or the other i just have a lot of tools right and i just throw like let me try with a hammer and like a screwdriver, anything. And the tools are just my hands and feet and knees and my butt and my head and I just throw it all in there and see, see what happens. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Right? Um, so that's, that's the, the foundation of, of, of what, I, what I'm thinking about when I'm rolling. Every position, I just think about that space, yes or no, can I get him out, can I not, how do I do it? He's in some weird position I've never seen before. I just think about how can I how can I somehow, you know, close that space or move it away and, and not let him get it, right? And that's usually the solution for me. And then sometimes it's so complicated, that whatever they're doing, that I'm just lost. And then I, I tap 20 times and, and then, you, then you sit out and look at what the guy's doing and you try to figure it out. And the solution is always, he was just like one step ahead of the game. Right? The, the technique in, in itself is it's actually usually kind of simple. I mean, it's usually just removing a foot or doing a roll, or taking one step, or putting one hand. It's, that's not really the complicated part. The complicated part is the, is, the, is the strategical mind game. Who can create a situation where you're one step ahead? Whoever is catching up is always losing. You do the, the exact same move, one step ahead of the guy, like tactically, or one step behind, the exact same move, and it's the difference between night and day, if it's gonna be super easy to do or super difficult. Um, so that's usually, like, the actual mechanics and and moves and techniques are fairly simple to figure out, especially if, if you like understand this and, and you add experience. But the difference is the difficulties are the, is, is the timing and the it's like chess, you know. Whereas one one step ahead in chess is winning. Right? It's the same thing. Anyway, so let's do one little last drill. What I want you to do is is um, is this. This is how I usually drill it, and I would demo it, but I can't. Sorry. Um, you start in any position, and then you kind of roll but you don't roll. All you're doing is trying to get into the space, stay in the space, or get the person out. But you, you take turns a little bit, right? There's no resistance. Like, I do a pass. Let's say I'm here, right? I'm gonna do some kind of pass. I get into the space. He's gonna do some kind of move, right? He defends the space. Maybe he goes to his knees. I look at, uh, how can I get into the space? Oh, I can't, because he moved there. I'm gonna <laughs> do that. I will probably do that. Right? He escapes. Okay, oh God. I don't usually pull guard, but now I have to defend the space. Now what does he need to do? He needs to get in there. Oh, he figured out a clever way of stepping. He's got in there. So what do I have to do? I have to kind of clear that space, not let him get in. All right? Do another thing. Pass. Oh, shit. He almost passed. What is an almost pass? An almost pass is him almost getting into the space. So I fucking defend it with everything I got. All right? And notice how I'm commenting. It's almost like a football commentator. All right? I want you to do this. So you're rolling, and one person needs to, to talk all the time. <laughs> so how many? We're like 80 people. I want to hear 40 people talking nonstop. Constantly try to explain what's happening. 
Like, oh shit, he escapes to his knees. He escapes to his knees, but he gets one hook in. He's got one control with one foot. He's trying to get the foot out. He's rolling, so he puts an arm in. And he gets the foot control. Oh shit, he pushes the arm out of the space. He's got to defend it. Right? He comes to the knees. He's almost passing, but he's got to defend, defend the space. Okay, you get the point, right? You need to be a commentator. And let's do this for like four minutes and you realize that all you're actually doing is just this. In and out of the space, that's it. Let's try, go. So this, does that kind of make sense? So what, what you are doing speaking out loud is what's going on in my head when I roll. Like I constantly have a conversation with myself. I do my workshop on Thursday, I'll talk a little bit about talking with myself. I'm, I'm a little bit weird like that, but I do it a lot when I'm rolling. I'm just always, I hear always like a commentator voice of that space, what's going on. It's, it's kind of a boring game at some point, I mean. He's, he's always saying like, oh, he got into space, he got out of space, put a foot, where's the foot, how does he get the foot up, you know? So, it's, so that explains everything in terms of positioning. And usually I can take a group who like, are very beginners or didn't really do jiu-jitsu before, and if we do, go through the positions and talk about what you're actually trying to accomplish in every position, which is just this, uh, and then make them do this drill, suddenly it looks they're actually rolling. They're actually slow rolling, uh, because this is all you're doing. And then you add experience and you add submissions, uh, and that's jiu-jitsu. That's everything in jiu-jitsu. So. And you, you will find it, that submissions are, are usually just giving up control with that space a little bit to go for a submission, and if it doesn't work, you usually lo lose the control. Um, let's say even like, go, go to the wall. Even if I do like an arm bar, if I do fucking leg can move, if I do an arm lock, See, I have some sort of control with that space. This is why the armbar works. Right? If I lose that control, I kind of lose the, the armbar. Right? Um, so you just add more stuff, but this is the foundation of, of everything, at least in my head. That's the foundation of everything in, in jiu-jitsu when I roll. Right? And also when I explain techniques, it's just any guard pass I will ever explain to you the next 20 years, is just a different way of opening up that space or getting in there. There's nothing more to it. Right, everywhere of recovering the guard, everywhere of escaping, it's just a different way of getting that space back. And every hold, hold or position or scramble is just a different way of holding, staying in that, that space. Right? So that should explain everything you need to know for the next 20 years and more probably. Okay, so let's do another thing. So that's the first thing that always happens in my head. I have the football commentator talking. It's, uh, it's my invisible friend. Okay, so the next thing that I think about a lot, uh, just go on your back, is I think that the number one rule of thumb in jiu-jitsu, at least for me, is unless you're in full control, uh, unless I'm in full control, I always keep my head over my butt. Right? Unless I have like full fucking control and know everything I do, then I'll, I can get away with it. So whenever there's any sort of danger, or any potential danger, I always worry first and foremost about my head over my butt. Right, someone, I, I, I was training with someone maybe probably 2002, 2003 or something, a long time ago, and I remember he just mentioned it to someone across the, the room. He said, like, yeah, never, never, always, like, never drop your head on your butt or lift your butt over your head. And I totally forgot about it. And, and it's like later, maybe seven, eight, ten years later, I started to think, like, what was that? It just kind of came back to me. And that became the foundation of pretty much everything I teach. In jiu-jitsu is head over butt, and what I, this is what I tell my guys at home, is this is the only thing I teach them, ever. And every class I just talk about head over butt or butt under head, uh, really. And it's, it's kind of boring, but that's all they do. And if you, if you watch them roll, you will notice that this is all that's really in their, in their mind. It's like always defend, the, you can also call it posture. I like to call it head over butt because it's more descriptive. But in reality, I would say, if, if you look, if, especially if you look at beginner's competition, then it's very obvious because all the mistakes are super obvious. If you, the higher the level, the mistakes are just like a split second. But it's fundamentally always, pretty much always the same. I would say, look, go look at beginner's compete and you will see that I would say eight or nine out of 10 times when something goes wrong, when they get taken down, they fall, they get caught in the triangle, an arm bar gets swept, you know, just kind of stumble in the guard or lose the top position or something, it's eight out of 10 times you will see how obvious it is that it's because the head was, was at the level or underneath the butt. Right? And sometimes it's a matter of, of the head is being pulled down, sometimes it's a matter of, of standing up wrong, sometimes it's just like, just kind of fall 
or it's a matter of the person lifting the butt up and your head stays down, it doesn't really matter how it happens, but it's, it's very, very, very often that mistake. And if you, if you build a foundation of always worrying about your hair and your ass, where they are in, in, in relation to each other, I think that that will defend a lot and it makes everything easier for you. Right? Always think about your hair and your butt when you're rolling. Okay. The hair and the butt. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is where the demo, imagine the demo. I would usually do a really cool demo and it's better with the gi because it's easier for him to break the posture. Right. Open guard is, is the first uh, situation where I, I will demo this usually. Because for him to be really efficient in, in terms of sweeping or submitting, he needs to do one, lower my head, or two, raise my butt. Really, in almost every, I, I can just count like maybe on one or two hand situations where he can get away with not doing it, but that's really the foundation. Right? Um, so when you see me, see me roll or I stand in someone's guard or even we're standing up, you will notice that even though I have no fucking clue what guard he's playing, because remember, last time I studied jiu-jitsu was like 10 years ago when I was really, when I really wanted to learn jiu-jitsu. Now I just kind of roll it. You know, I, it just, it's just for, 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 for likes on social media. Um, <laughs> but, but really all I do is that I just worry about my head and my butt. I don't really worry about anything else. I don't try to, again, try to analyze whatever movie he's doing. I just think, how is he currently trying to lift my butt or lower my head? And that's what I, that's what I defend, right? Uh, so here comes the demo, which I, I, I'm not sure I can do it. Do something, I, I'll, see, I'll, I'll stop you if, if it hurts. Okay, so freeze. This is pretty bad, see that? My head is down and it's really difficult for me to stand up. Okay, continue. This is gonna go, probably gonna go bad. Unless I stand up, look, oh, I stood up. <laughs> Clever, because that lifted my head over my butt. Go again. See that pose? See my legs? Oh, I now push my head over my butt again. I have no idea what this guy is doing. This is like, <laughs> this is like some fucking new age shit. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I learned something new was when Marcelo was winning. <laughs> Just notice what I'm doing. Oh shit. Look at that. You see what happened? Go back. Same thing. Okay. I, I kind of know what this is. This is Marcelo. Yeah, yeah. Look, he was about to stand up. If I stay low, what's going to happen? Go. Lift my butt and I'm done. Right? So what was my defense? Sometimes I have to, to do it to find out what I'm doing because it's so like second nature. But I noticed myself, as soon as I'm here, I did that. I, I bought myself a few more seconds. And now I'm wrestling in a pretty bad position. <laughs> okay, try something else. Okay, I'm gonna let him do something. Do something. This is bad, see? Why, why is it bad? Because there's no way I can pull my butt underneath my head anymore. I will try Look at what I'm trying to do, it's probably gonna fail, go. See what I did? I just tried to pull my butt underneath my head again, right? So, okay, I have no more leg for more demo. But this is pretty much it, open guard. And it goes for a lot of things, even, even side control. Even top positions. Look at this. If he's, if he's like a big guy. Okay, one day you find yourself teaching seminars in Russia. And they're all white belts, but they also did 20 years of Sambo and, and Olympic weightlifting. True story. And you're like, this is a fucking great side control. And the guy just fucking, wow, just fucking rolls, rolls me off like crazy. Just even just roll me off. Like this? So, no, just, just kind of. Do the roll like that. Yes, go back. So even here, this is all the. Every time I feel any sense of little danger, the only thing I worry about is my is my hair and my butt. All right. So let's say if I'm here, now he can kind of push and roll me off. Right. But the only little difference is usually that. Go. See, it's very little. I'm in the mound. This is good. This is dangerous. 
I mean, I can get away with it as long as I'm in control. But the moment I start to lose any sort of control, it's always, always the head of a butt that saves me. Let's go to quarters, turn. Good. Turn a little bit. My black belt side. Have we all been here? It's like, oh shit, the back. You do that, and you kind of, oh fuck, you fall off. And poor God, right? We all did that. <laughs> Why? Because the head drops underneath the butt. So if I could somehow stay, keep the head over, I'm safe, right? And even standing up, you will see it very obvious. Beginners competition, so much pulls, and they, they kind of fall, right? Or let's say close to the guard. Have you ever seen this? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, armbar. Take an armbar. Yeah, that was a good armbar. Go up a triangle. Yeah, okay. Almost up. That's it, that's it, that's it. Armbar. Triangle. Almost platter. Omoplata. Omoplata. <laughs> Omoplata. Go. Triangle. <laughs> Triangle. All right. All right. All right. You get the point. You get the point. And for if you if you watch beginners compete, you will see it so obviously that this is what happens. The moment they manage to pull down the head or lift the butt or the person makes that mistake himself, it's like, oh, but it's, oh fuck, he had a really good armbar, a great triangle. No, he didn't. You fucking drop your head right into it, right? So this is usually what I'm teaching. I tell people, this is what you need to do, and then I remind them every round of sparring when they fail, every competition, we look at the video, like, you drop your head, you lifted your butt. This is what we try to fix constantly, right? So try to play a little bit guard, a little bit kind of open guard, Play around and see the difference from, from you having your head under your butt, which you can totally get away with if you're in full control. If there's no danger, you do it, because that'll give you extra pressure. But as soon as there's a little bit of flashing light saying, eh, 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 incoming sweep or incoming submission, like immediately, this is what you think about. Go back to safety, head over butt, because you know whatever they do, they need to pull down your head or lift your butt. All right, so let's, I know it's difficult, just try to play with it a little bit. All right, let's go. Okay, don't take my word for it, please, because it's impossible in 10 minutes to do this. But keep it in mind, when you're rolling and something goes wrong, all right, if you get caught in a sweep or a submission or something, or even better, you look at someone roll, beginners, it's easier, unless you have like a really fucking matrix jiu-jitsu brain and you can analyze a ton of information. Start looking at beginners and you see when they get swept, when they get taken down, when they fall in triangles, arm bars, chokes, omoplatas, everything, and you see how often it is that it's just a matter of, of the head going down and or the butt going up, right? Um, and yes, you can totally get away with the opposite, totally. Uh, very often I'll pass with my head down and my butt up. Uh, like, let's say over under pass is something I like to do a lot. So let's say you do like an over under. <coughs> He's got good fucking solid control and he drops his, his shoulder. Okay, just, just freeze here for a second. This is great because I'm stuck. Right? So there's really nothing for him to worry about. But right now, none of his alarm bells are ringing. But if anything starts to go wrong for him, at any point, let's say I manage to push his head or something, or I shrimp out. He's not, if he stays here, now he's in trouble. Because now there's, he's, there's a, a potential danger. As soon as he feels a slight danger, he, just, he knows what to do. As soon as he feels like, oh, maybe he can attack now. Maybe there's a sweep. Maybe there's a bitch. Maybe I'm going to lose my balance. Right? Maybe he can grab my neck. He just, he don't even have to know exactly what I'm going to do. He, send, he smells danger and he just defaults back to safety. Right? If he insists on staying there with his head down and his butt up and there's some sort of danger, this is usually when I catch him with something. I, I mean, right now it's, it's too late for him because I, I killed the arm. I'm going to sit up, take the back, or I'm going to sweep or go for a double leg. It's too late for him unless he fucking quickly goes back to safety, right? Um, and really the best way to, to teach yourself this is, I mean, one, it's very nice if you have someone to remind you every day when you're rolling. This is what I do at, at, when we roll. All I do is just remind people about this pretty much. You, every time they get strapped, they like, look at how he lifted your butt or how he pulled your head down. 
right? But the best way is to fail in competition. You, you go and compete and you lose. Because whatever you lose in competition, you, you're not going to forget that, right? Because, the, because of the, the illusion of public humiliation, right? You imagine everybody's watching and uh, shit, you were losing and you're supposed to win. And like, no, it's like, it's, the result is completely random anyway, really. I mean, it's every single decision in, in two people's life up until that moment. And if you could write down the formula, you, you will find out who would win anyway. The moment you step on the mat, it's over. I mean, it's already determined. But if you lose in competition, you will, you will never forget what happened. And very often, uh, it's because of your posture, especially in the beginning. Or you will see the, the split second where, where, where the opponent kind of moved in and, and lifted your butt a little bit or pulled your head down, and you weren't prepared for it. And you see, that's where, that's where, that's where it feels. So I, I find that's by far the best way to, to get good at this, is to lose in competition. Preferably a lot of people watching. Because then you definitely remember. A anything I lost with in competition is something that I'm really good at today. Like every single thing that someone pulled off on me is something that I'm best at now. Because my, my mind says, oh shit, that was embarrassing. It's not really embarrassing. But my mind thinks it's embarrassing. So I go home and I study. That's why I'm not really good at leg locks because I never, like, I never really lost to a lot of le leg locks because it was not really trendy back then. Right? Um, so, with that said, What's going on in my head? I'm always thinking about that space, attacking and defending it, and I'm always thinking about where is my head and where is my butt. And I'm trying to think, think a few steps ahead. Like whatever grip he takes, let's say I'm in, the open guard is a very great position to demo this. Okay, initiate any kind of sweep that you like to do. Okay, just take the first step. First step you do. Okay, that's great. This is pretty bad for me, right? So I'm, I'm looking at this and say, why is this bad? Because if I fall, my head is going to drop right, underneath my butt. So in this moment, I'm already thinking, how can I avoid my head falling down? Right? So what's the solution for me? Of course, you add 20 years of experience, and I immediately see I need to clear this foot and put my butt underneath my head. Because now he can't drop my head under my butt anymore. Right? So even if he, if he managed to make me fall, see that? I put that post. If I didn't put the post, now I'm, I'm toast. Right? So it's, it's very few details, but I have to okay, do something else. I'd like to do. It's easier with the key because you see it more. Okay. But yes. Okay. Me. Fine. Great. Okay. Freeze. So, what's the next thing that's gonna happen? He's gonna lift my butt, right? This this really sucks. So go back once. So as soon as he gets here, I need to somehow figure out a way to keep my my head on my butt in the next moment, right? And I, I happen to I'll come up with something right now. Go. See? See what I do? Build a frame with my arms and my legs, and now the, the sweep doesn't work. And I'm not lying when I say I came up with this right now, as I was explaining. This is not something I've been drilling. But just from looking at it, looking at the situation, and knowing what he's gonna do, look what's happening. Why is he sweeping me? Why, 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 why? Because he's lifting my butt and keep my head down. So I see him go for it, go. I can keep that. Go, sweep. See, that's all I need to know about the sweep. I happen to know the butterfly sweep, but really it's all I'm thinking in my head. I see, oh shit, he's about to lift my butt. How can I fix it somehow? And you keep doing that many, many times and you realize, oh, just one hand on the mat is maybe all it takes. A hand on the foot and now he can't do that, right? So that reveals everything that's going on in my head. Do you mind going five minutes over time? Please. I'll add the last thing. So. One, know the string theory, right? Attack and defend is all, every position is just this. Two, always think about your hair and your butt. And this is something I can talk about for months and years. I, I tried to do it in 15 minutes, so, so you have to do the rest, right? From now on, you always think about your, your hair and your butt. Where are they? And, and every time you see some kind of danger, like you have to do one of two things, either raise your head or drop your butt. Those are the two options you have to fix it. Right? If he's about to break the posture, you fix it head up or butt down. Right? Now, the next thing is, the last thing that I think a lot about, it's weird to say, I think a lot about this in life, but this is where I think a lot about elbows. So, <laughs> you, you know we always, uh, you'll tell beginners, in, in, when you're a beginner, you need to keep your elbows in. Right? Don't stretch your arms, don't defend yourself like this. Right? That's kind of obvious, we all hear that. But it's, it's honestly true. 
if someone shows up day one for jujitsu and you duct tape their elbows to the to the side, like wait, I mean, it's it's gonna still gonna suck, but but they're gonna take away 80% I can do. Like literally 80% of my, my attacks are gone if they duct tape their elbows. Or let's say we, we build a gi where the where the arms are like stuck already. Like a beginner's, the ultimate beginner's gi. <laughs> Don't do stupid shit. That's great, right? Why is this? Why is this? What's the strongest uh, like structure of the body? Right, what's the weakest? This is the weakest you could possibly be, right? The more dense the body is, the stronger it is, right? Stand up. Catch me. <laughs> okay. Why did he? Why did he do like this? Because it's the strongest part. Why did he not catch me like this? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the more compressed your body is, the stronger you are, right? So when you're defending yourself, you need to, to compress your, your, your skeletal position like this. This is strong. This is great. This is horrible. Right? This is the worst position to escape from. So, of course, knowing that when you're defending yourself, you keep your, when, when, when you're in big danger, you're on bottom, you keep your elbows in. Easy, right? But you all also have to think about it from the other side. When you're attacking, right? Pretty much, I'd never go from position to attack in terms of, of position or like maybe getting to a better position or going for a submission. I never go for that directly. I never even, th if I, let's say I'm in, I'm in psych psych Any position, this goes for any position. I'll explain this really quick. This can be an entire class. Any position, let's say I'm here. I'll never go from here, from zero to the end station, right? There's always like a middle station where my train stops, which is if I go here directly to some kind of submission, I'll just, I'm, this is so 2001. <laughs> Catch wrestling, pride, like, like this, right? It's really difficult. If you attack, if you try to attack when the person is strongest, that's like the worst time to attack. It's the most difficult. When they're, when they're tight, right? So to make everything easier for yourself, or at least for me, for me to make things easier for me, is the only thing I attack is just the, his, his, his strength. I wanna make him weak before I try to do anything, right? So the only thing I worry about when I'm attacking and when I'm in any top position is how can I make him do this? Because I know that's the weakest possible position for his upper body. Right? Or even better, how can I make him do this? This, this is kind of difficult, unless you have a friend who can pull his legs. Right? But the more you can, you can, you can open the elbows, the, the easier life is going to be for you. Right? So you try to execute the exact same thing with the person being here and the person being here. And you will see that the exact same move is like worlds apart in terms of how, how easy or difficult it is. Right? So now you know what's going on in my head. I always think about this space and nothing else. I always think about my hair and I always think about my ass. Right? Where is my butt and my head in, in terms of each other? And whenever I'm attacking, the only thing you will see me attacking, now you know. The secret is out. When you see me roll, you will always see me just looking to, do, to make him do this. If I could do that, everything is easy and everything looks cool. And you see, oh shit, he just did like something super black belty, black belty. But in reality, it's just because he, he's like this and I can do whatever I want, right? So an, an obvious, like a classic way you will know about this is you, you go for an under. Why do you go for an under? Right? Because it opens the arm, right? Why is this not great? Because I don't have, his elbow is in and he's going to escape immediately, right? I'm, I'm out, I lost it. Why do you try to kill this arm like that, right? Because when the elbow is out, everything is easy. Right? So that's the first thing, and, and those are like very classic ways of, of approaching this, but often I'll, I'll just kind of come up with stuff on the fly. Right? I'm just looking at this, and sometimes he's weak or he's not paying attention, and I can just kind of open it. And I'll come up with some way of, of doing it. Maybe just this. I don't know. I just came up with this. Right? But often I'll be kind of holding him a little bit, and I see him open the space. And this is all I think about. When you see me in a top position, when I'm in position to attack, I only think about his armpits. Nothing else. It's the only thing on my mind is Thomas' armpits, right? So the moment I see that space, I take it in one way or the other. Now, the only thing on my mind is that now I have the space, I'm not going to give it back to him. He's going to have to fight for it, right? 
So I, I come up with some way of holding it. Okay, just try a little bit. Don't, don't make me look bad. It might look like an arm triangle, but it's not. Go. And look how I took the other arm as well. This is my only purpose in life, to not let him get that space back. And look how I mount. I just mount like the worst mount ever. I just step. That's a mount. Go. I could be thinking about all sorts of things right now. But the only thing that's on my mind is this. As long as I have that space, everything is easy. I just pick and choose anything. Right? And you will find when you, when you roll, when this happens, it's never good for you. It always, always sucks, right? <laughs> it always sucks. There's never a situation where this is just great and you will keep doing your thing. When your elbow is out, you, this, you can never move on before you, you defend it. Right? You see, you're in full defense mode. And I just, I just, I just mount, I just, I just do this. It's the worst mount ever. But it works because he's got nothing in terms of, of defending, right? Exact same position, elbows in. If I try to do that, suicide. It's over, right? And even sometimes, let's say you see turtle. I will just look for this everywhere. Whenever I'm attacking, I always look for that space. Go to a little bit. Let's say I'm here. Right. Now, let's look. I look for this space. Right. You do pretty quick class, you notice he's closing the space all the time. There's no going in there for a great reason. Because that's what I, now he's strong. Right? But let's say I'm here, and even in a position where it's not obvious to keep his elbow out, I'm still going to do it because I know it's going to make him weaker. Right? So let's say I'm here, and somehow this is either weak, he's not thinking too much about it, or he just opens this up a little bit. I see this, it's like, ha I take it, right? I just do something. Let's say I just hold it like this, okay? Now, let's simulate something is happening. He's kind of trying to pull guard on me. Oh, rest up. I you see. I'm just coming up with ways of holding that up. Go. And at some point, I'm gonna lose it. But at least I had a good run, right? You, you feel how that sucks? Yeah. Everything you try good to do time. sucks. Yeah. I do the same thing. Turtle. 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 Exactly the same position, with one difference. I don't worry about his elbow. He opened it, opened it, but I didn't think about it. I didn't do Chris's class, right? So he took it back. Now pull guard. There's no way I'm just gonna walk to mount and like leisurely go to his back and take a wrist lock. No way. And there's only one difference, one difference at all. Was I focusing my attack on making him weaker first or not? That's the only difference, right? So when you see me just kind of doing stupid stuff on top of someone and like wow how can he you're like that's crazy he's like sitting on him in weird positions and holding this and the guy can't get out but now you know the only thing I do is just make sure he doesn't get that elbow back okay go do something See, right? Even when he's in my guard, it's a little bit more difficult no gi, but let's say he puts, yeah. put, put your hands somewhere on me. Like that, I always just try to do that. Right? It's not a normal plata. It's just, I don't let him do that again, right? So let's go. Okay, so let's look at the situation. Okay. Demo one, I'm only, I'm putting all my priorities on this elbow, right? Do something. 
keep building it. Okay. Go, do something. Do something. Perhaps. But I have no idea what sweep that was. Notice why he fell? His butt went up and his head went down. Now he's the exact same position. Exact same. But I don't worry about this elbow. He, wait, he opened it? But I, I was like, I forgot. Stop. There is no easy sweep where he just starts falling. Why? Because he's, he's, he's strong, right? So, it's up to you to drill this for the rest of your life. <laughs> because we're running out of time, I apologize. But now you know, if you see me roll, three things happen in my head and really nothing else. One, I always think about this space, attack it or defend it. Two, always think about how can I put my head up or my butt down? And what is he doing to break that, All right? And three, when I'm in a position to attack, I always attack the arm first, make him do this. And you will, you will immediately notice if someone holds your arm out, it's never nice. It's never a good thing. This is always annoying. There's no way you're gonna start passing or submitting or sweeping or anything before you fix this, right? But sometimes you need to be caught in it a lot to kind of see that, oh yeah, that actually sucks. You just see me do it and you see like, oh, probably. But if you roll with someone who's consistently making you do this, you realize, oh shit, I can't do anything without my arms in, right? So no more time for demos or for letting you drill it, but keep it in your head, those three things and look at people roll, look at beginners, compete, because it's so obvious, and even better, compete yourself and lose. Watch the video and you're like, oh, fuck yeah, I, I dropped my head, or lifted my butt, or I opened my elbows. And it's always just that, always, always, right? Often. And you can break all the rules, of course, in jiu-jitsu it's, it's never like, it's always like a guideline, it's never a rule. So you can break all the rules, if you, sometimes you get away with it, but it's always good to kind of, stay on the safe side. So uh, another camp, watch me roll, and you can see there's really not much going on in my head. It's just this. This is all I do, really. And then you add 20 years of practice. Helps a little bit, obviously. Right? But hopefully that will help you too. Uh, so any questions during the week? Uh, again, I'm not really rolling, but I'll probably be sitting on the mat, or at least I'm DJing. If I can't look cool on the mats, I'll look cool in the, with the DJ ball thing. Um, so feel free to grab me at any time. I'd be happy to talk more about this. As I said, now we did one hour, five minutes, and uh, I usually will teach this in, in at least three classes. So you got a super condensed version. My class tomorrow is going to be uh, way more technical details, like something way more specific. And then I do the workshop on Thursday, which I have, I have no idea how to explain what it is, but you're going to have to show up. All right, cool. Thank you so much for uh, joining in.